Happy Thursday. Yesterday we uh, thought about Rahab. Um, before that, we were looking at the um, walls of Jericho tumbling down and thinking about uh, the, the Christophany of Jesus appearing. Um, I, I want to just reflect a few lessons here from the Battle of Jericho. Uh, I'm struck, uh, first of all, by the obedience that is demonstrated by Joshua here to lead his people to do a rather silly thing, march around Jericho six days in a row. Um, <laughs> it doesn't look like much of a military plan, and sometimes um, it can take some guts to do some things that you believe the Lord is calling on you to do. Uh, I want to note that, that this looks like, uh, because they have, uh, they're instructed to have um, the priests and some, uh, some of the temple instruments sort of going before them, that there's a sense in which this is a, like a worship service. Uh, an, an act of worship. Um, I want to note the whole call to silence as well. And, and this is the one that I'll leave a challenge for you um, with. So uh, in battle, uh, what I've heard about the most shocking thing about battle today is how loud it is. People are just not prepared for how loud battle is. Um, but in ancient battles, the, you know, the warriors would often scream and try and incite terror in, in, uh, in the people they were going to fight. Here there's this code of silence. And that's, that's, part perhaps of, uh, that's part perhaps of worship. Certainly it's part of humility uh, that they're not thinking that this is about them and that they are being sort of reverent uh, before God. Uh, it's also perhaps to give them time to think and reflect and to, to pray and to meet with God. So I don't know, how much silence do you get in your day? Now, I think the biggest challenge we have, some of you have challenges of silence because you've got kids and they, they're talking nonstop, they're at that age. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> some of you uh, maybe don't have much silence because you don't get much personal space. Some of you don't have any silence because you've always got something on. Um, I, I read a while back that um, TikTok has now replaced Google and Facebook as the number one uh, application on the internet. A billion people a month access TikTok. And I was shocked because I had no idea. I mean, I, I just, I'm like, uh, TikTok, isn't it it's like silly dance videos? Clearly, I don't understand what's going on. So I downloaded the TikTok app, and I had it on for a while. And uh, I, I, I wasn't really using it until I started to use it. And then, like, over the course of a couple of days, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, my goodness. I am drawn back to this app to just scroll through these things. And there's something very, dare I say it, addictive to this. And, and uh, I, I realized that, when I realized that, I just, I just took the app off. I'm like, okay, I, I just need to get rid of this because there's, there's not really any value here. But I, I thought, what is it that I'm, okay, I've just added 20, 30 minutes a day. And I'm watching these stupid three minute videos. What is it that I have given up? What am I not doing? And I thought, I just am feeling every moment. And that's, that's not a good thing. So I want to suggest to you, as we uh, are in a, perhaps this is a down week for you. It's certainly a different kind of week for you. I want to encourage you to make more time for silence, to hear and be with and rest in the presence of God. He is always there and he's always there for you. Have a good day.